Thank you everybody for your attendance. I will open this meeting of Cabinet. Um, item 1, apologies for absence. I have apologies from Councillor Jeremy Oates, the leader. Um, item 2, minutes of the previous meeting. So we have minutes of the 8th of September and the 16th of March. Uh, they're moved by Councillor Farrell. Is there a seconder? Councillor Clements. All those in favour? That is carried. Uh, item 3, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest? No. Okay, uh, item four, question time. I believe there are no questions. Thank you. Item five, matters referred to Cabinet in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedure rules. Uh, there are two from Corporate Scrutiny and uh, Infrastructure Safety and Growth. Uh, I know the Chairman of Corporate has been caught up in traffic, so we'll give him a, a minute. So if we can ask Councillor Simon Goodall to come up to a microphone and present the recommendations from his committee. Live now. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. So, um, yeah, we uh, we had a full discussion with regard to the Staffordshire Sustainability Report um, communications plan, um, and that also included an update on Tamworth Borough Council's approach to EV charging points. So there was a number of recommendations, and I'll I'll sort of I'll go back a bit. I've probably been to cabinet on maybe three um, occasions previously: 2017, 2019, I think 2021 was the most recent time, with regard to EV charging points within the the borough and what we were doing, and the plan that was. Um, what plan we had brought numerous recommendations and we're still in a situation where nothing has, has happened and I think the whole scrutiny committee felt disappointed at that and we really need to move things forward so I'll go on to the recommendations there's, there's there's four recommendations in the report and then two additional ones that we that we brought forward so that was that the sustainability board report communication board report was was adopted and I think we were all happy with that one um, that the Staffordshire County Council public EV charging infrastructure strategy uh, be adopted kind of kind of okay with that thought it had already been recommended they recommended to cabinet previously anyway um, the borough council commissions a borough wide bespoke strategy to provide a framework for making decisions around ev charging and that the ev charging update on the installation of a fast charging point was was endorsed we got an update that obviously you're aware nothing's nothing's actually happened um, we did have Two further recommendations, which I think are in the, in the now in the report, which is Tamworth Borough Council EV charging strategy was um, was received by the scrutiny committee before the end of 2023. I think that's pro possibly a challenge, but I think we, as a borough council, has had enough time to to pre prepare it. And then the final recommendation was that the um, the installation of charging points within Tamworth be treated as a cabinet priority moving forward. And I think, I think given the time, given the amount of encouragement that scrutiny has tried to give cabinet, I think they're fair recommendations. So happy to uh, answer any questions or have a discussion. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for your report. Um, Councillor Goodall, and obviously you'll know that I welcome this report um, again. Um, I've not sat on Cabinet until this year. Um, as you know, I drive an EV vehicle and charging other than on, on my own drive, unless they are um, business-owned 
chargers like the ones that are on MEX, they're owned by a company. We, we are far, far, far behind the curve when it comes to EV charging. So I welcome this report and I also welcome the recommendations. And I don't think that to have a draft form of an EV strategy by the end of this year is, is undoable. I think it's a, it's a reasonable challenge to give to the Cabinet. Any other questions or comments from cabinet members? No, no. One thing I'll I'll add, say thank you for the recommendations, is uh, it expressed my frustration with, uh, in particular at the moment, the county council with the lack of on-street provision we've got in the borough. Um, you know, I've, as a, as a patch councillor, surveyed residents on the Lees, for example, where it's terraced houses and they're desperate for on-street parking. And as a borough council, we're absolutely powerless to do anything about that. Um, because 99% of the street furniture and tarmac in the borough is counties, uh, and as much as we're we're saying, look, you know, we have a real demand there, we're we're beholden upon somebody else to provide this infrastructure and this service to the residents. I say, if there's are there no other questions or comments from members, uh, Councillor Summers. No, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. We 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 are at the mercy of the county council for the infrastructure. Um, I mean, I also live in a terrace house and I, uh, EV is not an option for me, even though I'd probably like it to be in the future. Uh, price needs to come down a bit first. But yeah, I mean, it's um, really that's where I see the future of it going in terms of uh, EV uh, charging being on street pillars for, for anybody to, to use, uh, make it a little bit more democratic um, and adoption will then increase, uh, decrease the prices of them. So yeah, um, I've got no problem with the with it, but really, um, I think a draft by the end of two thousand twenty three might be pushing it a bit. Um, uh, you know, it, it's 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 not something. I mean, for, I think efforts have concentrated on um, our strategy within the organisation of how we, as an organisation, are going to function with EV. Um, it's it's uh, granted not been on the top of the priority list and there's a lot more this council's currently doing um i'm not saying we can't try and fit it in but resource wise we are we're pushing it at the moment with everything we have going on um it, it's a chicken and egg situation isn't it we, we and, and we've we've got to be very um mindful of the fact that uh, there's only so many places we can put that will have an influence on, on charges. So, um, yeah, I, I totally understand, and there's no reason we shouldn't set ourselves high targets, so I'm, I'm happy to to accept the recommendations, but I just think, um, you know, they, they might be a little too ambitious for us to get done by the end of the year. Uh, Councillor Summers makes a very good point, and also does Councillor Tina Clements. Um, we, we have been uh, working on this subject for quite some time and it's passed around a number of cabinet members. Uh, what I would say is that I consider a draft a work in progress. So as long as we have some, uh, we are working towards a finished document by the end of the year, I don't see that as uh, something we can't achieve. So uh, I agree. Um, that we are beholden to the county council because a lot of the funding will come from them uh, to implement these changes. So, but that's pretty much it. Thank you. Uh, I've got Councillor Goodall, and I'll, and then I'll, like I say, I'll bring on officers, Councillor Goodall. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair, for giving me a, another opportunity to to speak. Um, six years ago, six years this this year, when I first came to cabinet with a report to sort of try and encourage Tamworth Borough Council to do something by implementing some EV charging points in the town. Six years. Seems an awful long time to me to be in the same position. We're way behind the curve compared with other authorities. Let's, let's do something. Let's do something. Let's not blame County Council for this. Let's let's grasp the nettle. We can we can we can wait forever, and sort of there may well be changing technologies, but we need to do something. 
we need to do something. Only, only this, this week, last week, I saw a planning application. McDonald's is putting two charging points in. The, these people can't be wrong. We should do something. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thanks, Chair. I mean, I think if, if it's helpful, um, it's, it isn't quite true that nothing's happened. Um, we've had what started to be quite a poor contractual agreement with, with BP Pulse. They have now made various promises to actually install the four that are referenced in the report. So officers are keeping quite a close tab on that as, as that goes forward. Um, I see um, the wider strategy um, being a very reasonable timescale, to be honest with you. It will be a work in progress. It is reliant on other parties because, as, as Councillor Goodall has just referenced, we're not the whole solution to this. It's, it's, it's engaging other businesses that have got parking facilities to actually go down the line of installing them for their, uh, their users and others. Um, and it's also beholden on the County Council as a highways authority to make sure there's necessary infrastructure available uh, along with the central networks of, of this world. So I, I, you know, I think the, um, the, the proposal for making a draft strategy I think is entirely reasonable. Um, I don't think it'll be the finished article, but it'll certainly be a good work in progress. So I'd be more than comfortable to take that away. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Barrett. Um, yeah, so I, I, I get your points. I think we all share the desire to get EV charging infrastructure in. Um, you know, I've had uh, as a as a county council meetings with the the officers in charge of the county and stressed that Tamworth needs EV infrastructure. Um, we need that putting in, uh, and, I, and I will say say it's. I think um, that the slowness of going in is not a lack of political will, and I can say that as a as a portfolio as my in my previous portfolio, I gave the the, the clear direction and leadership with demolished garage sites, get EV charging infrastructure into those sites. Um, unfortunately, it's not as simple as just turning them up and putting them in. It's quite a commercial market, and there's a lot of businesses that only want to cherry pick, um, which puts small authorities like us at a disadvantage. But I would like to thank the committee for the work. And I, and I do get your, you know, I commend you for your passion on this subject. And I will say cabinet does share that, that desire to get infrastructure in, um, you know, where, where we've got more control is our car parks, for example. And if we want visitors coming to the town who drive EV cars, we need to make sure we're providing that provision. Um, I think, probably our role as a borough is probably actually more focused on the visitor economy than the actual res residential provision because of the nature of the assets that this borough council owns. But again, you know, th thank you. Thank you for being this uh, council. Board and I, you know, I commend your passion on this subject. Um, if I say I'm, I'm happy to move the recommendations unless anybody's got any other comments about councillor comments. There is um, the county council have got an EV strategy. This, this sits under my chairmanship with Prosperous Staffordshire so I'm happy to share that strategy if you haven't already got it and maybe um, if you've got a working group coming with the, whoever's got the portfolio I'm not sure who it is, is it you? I don't even know who, who, it's, who it sits with but um, I'm happy to to try and go through some of the points that we've raised at a county level and, and Rob's right you know we we bang the drum for EV charging with our highways managers with Councillor Williams, who's the uh, cabinet member for highways, at uh, every opportunity. And like you, I'm very passionate about making sure that we as a borough are working with the county council to get the infrastructure that we require. Uh, and as Rob has just said, if nothing else, for the tourist visitors rather than the, for the residents that actually live here. That's the door, so all those in favour? Thank you very much, Councillor Goodall. Uh, so uh, I can see Councillor Jay is here. So we've moved them around. So uh, Councillor Jay, do you want to introduce your recommendation from corporate scrutiny? Sure. Good evening, and thanks for um, accommodating me. Um, so I'm here as chair of the corporate scrutiny committee. Meet, uh, committee. We received a report on the 14th of March um, from the chief executive uh, about Solway Tamworth Limited. It was an update report. Uh, it was reported that the trading company had been set up as a tool to use to generate income where the options arose, but to date no such opportunities had arisen. Um, from the conversation we had, there are costs to administer that company, even though um, it's not generating any income, of about three to three and a half thousand pounds per year. Uh, we had a good discussion on this, and the committee would like to recommend that the cabinet wind up Solway Tamworth Limited. 
Thank you, Councillor Jay. Um, I, I thank you for the report. I read it in great detail and aware of the, the background. Um, if I'm correct, we can um, we can put the company into um, dormancy to realise that saving, and, and uh, Cabinet can move that we we pull any of the, the financial assets out of that company. Would that be correct, Mr. Barrett? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, the, a company can be put into dormancy. It still carries, I think it's £12 a year to do the certificate of conformity. But uh, my understanding is that would be the only cost uh, with that. But it, it would then retain the structure of the, organ of the company um, should an opportunity arise. The Cabinet members have any questions or comments? Um, so I'm, I'm happy to move. We put it in dormancy and, and remove any, uh, you know, any assets in the in the business back to the authority. Okay. Um, it, I've got just a couple of seconds. I think Councillor Summers caught my eye first. Uh, so all in favour? Thank you. That is carried. Thank you both, gentlemen, for bringing your recommendations this evening. So it takes us on to item. Uh, six, social housing regulation and compliance, council housing, the report of the portfolio holder for homelessness prevention and social housing. Councillor Farrell. It is. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is uh, an update to Cabinet. Um, it's, uh, you recall, it's gone through um, lots of committees in this council. I think it first came to Cabinet um, in November last year. It's been to um, the Audit Governance Committee. It's been to Corporate Scrutiny Committee a couple of times. And it's been on my uh, housing uh, subcommittee. So uh, it's an update on where we are. Um, the team have done a fantastic job um, getting ourselves prepared. Um, and it also sets out the resource um, needed over the next two years uh, to fulfil our obligations as a council to meet the required regulatory standards uh, across our housing stock. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good report. Um, you know, we've effectively um, looked at ourselves in the mirror and, and, and kind of given ourselves a, a bit of a health check, uh, how we're getting on in our housing stock, um, identified um, uh, what we need to um, improve on, which, which isn't very much, uh, identified what we're doing really well, um, and it, it, it shows the team in a really good light. So uh, this is just an update, Chair, um, and I'd like to uh, move this report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Farrell. Are there any questions or co uh, questions or comments from fellow cabinet members? No, no. I mean, I'm happy to second the recommendations, uh, Councillor Farrell. So, all those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, item seven: uh, Staffordshire Sustainability Board update. Uh, report of portfolio holder for skills planning, economy, and waste. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the report authors, Anna Miller, Assistant Director, and also Laura Patrick, uh, Regeneration Officer. The purpose of this report is the adoption of the Joint Staffordshire Sustainability Board Communications Plan for 2023, in conjunction with our partners, Staffordshire County Council, and the other districts and boroughs within Staffordshire. In summary, the Staffordshire uh, Sustainability Board was established in January to, uh, 2022 with the aim of encouraging and supporting partnership work in between Staffordshire District, Borough and County Council uh, Councils in their efforts to tackle climate change and reduce carbon emissions towards a net zero target. In March of 2022, the Board adopted a vision uh, together with 10 commitments for action during the course of 2022 and 23. From there, the board has gone on to formulate a plan based on communication with residents and adopting a plan to help residents to reduce their carbon emissions. As part of this plan, there is a carbon bubble robe show, the aim of which is to engage residents on the ground, seeking their feedback and views. A pilot took place in April of 2022 in Stafford Town Centre, where a balloon was uh, present representing one tonne of carbon. The events are uh, very low carbon to run, recycled materials are used for the bubble, an electric van is used, excuse me, is used to transport and there will be a generator running on hydro, hydrogenated vegetables. Additional measures see the adoption of the Staffordshire County Council Public Electric Vehicle Charging Infrastructure Strategy, which has been developed in conjunction with all partners to help residents uh, tra to transition to electric vehicles, and we've heard some about tonight already. It is worth noting the resource implications. Most of the EV funding opportunities are aligned with transport authorities, which will reside with the upper tier authority. Staffordshire County Council, with their new strategy and the subject of this report, will bid on behalf of the entire county. 
They are now keen to see all districts and boroughs have their own strategies in place so that when the money becomes available, Tamworth has a strategy that can be delivered. The Staffordshire Leaders Board has also committed to work collaboratively across Staffordshire to successfully achieve net carbon zero in line with each local authority's climate change declarations. In terms of the recommendations, I'd like to move them on block. Uh, we've already had them uh, read out by uh, Councillor Goodall, so I'll save you having to listen to them again. The only additional bit that I would add is that I've asked for the date of the Carbon Roadshow to be moved from Wednesday to Tuesday, which is a market day, to match, yeah, to match the market and to maximise uh, potential. Thank you. I now, now move those recommendations. Thank you. Any questions or comments from fellow cabinet members? I know this report um, is a nice follow-up to the scrutiny recommendations. Um, so, if there's, uh, I'll happily second the recommendations for you, Councillor Doyle. Thank um, you so, much. all those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, it takes us to item eight: exclusion of press and public. Uh, I move that in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities' executive arrangements, meetings, and access to information. England Regulations 2012 and Section 100A.4 of the Local Government Act 1972. The press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3, part 1 of Schedule 12A of the Act, and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. Is there a seconder? Councillor Farrell, all those in favour? Thank you. Uh, if we can now exclude press and public and end of...